I'm Mark Callen, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Choosing the right gear for your saltwater tank is one thing, but choosing the right coral? That's a whole nother ball game, because the amount of coral choices that are available to saltwater tank hobbyists today is vast. When I started in saltwater tanks 35 years ago, your choices were pulsing xenia and glass anemones. Glass anemones is a handy name for aptasia. Yes, some unscrupulous local fish stores actually sold Aptasia as glass anemones. Because look, back in the day, if you could keep glass anemones or pulsing xenia alive, like you were some kind of coral growing god. Nowadays, we've got tons of choices available, which is a great testament to how far the hobby has come. Nowadays, hobbyists have lots of soft and hard coral choices available. And one of those very popular hard corals is Montipora coral. But not all Montipora coral are created equal. There's some that mm, can be a nuisance in your tank. One of those that comes to mind is Montipora capricornus. Montipora capricorn, AKA Monty caps, are a very popular SPS coral as they come in a variety of colors. They're easy to keep and they often grow in spiral patterns that are eye-catching and can get quite large. You can even graft different types of Monty caps together to get a coral with different colors inside of it. How cool is that? So if it's colorful, it's easy to keep, and you can even graft it, why am I not over the moon for this coral? Because it can grow quickly, get out of control, and create a lot of shading underneath that money cap. Take a look at this money cap that's creating all this shade underneath it. No coral is gonna be able to grow there, so that's all wasted space. I prefer to place money caps down low where their shading won't affect much. That's right, little dude, know your place, right there at the bottom. Now you may say, well, I can prune it. Well, that's true to an extent. Monty caps are very thin, so if you try to get after them with bone cutters, no matter how careful you are, it's likely just gonna fall apart. So don't expect to like bonsai prune it and keep it in shape. Incredible Hulk smash, that's more like what you're gonna get when you come to pruning Monty caps. Now let me keep this in perspective. Monty caps are not a bad coral. They're just something that as you move along in your saltwater tank career, you're gonna find it's very likely gonna fall out of favor and you're gonna regret putting it in your tank. But when you're new, you're just starting in corals, you wanna have some success to build a confidence, they're great. You can put them in your tank this month, they're this big, the next month they're probably gonna be that big. And you're like, this is awesome, I love this hobby, which is exactly what you want when you get started. But as your tastes get more refined, you're like, ah, that weedy money cap, I'd really like to have that space for something else. I'm gonna take it out and sometimes it can be too late. Okay, that being said, what about the other potentially weedy Montipora corals, Montipora digitata, and of course our favorite, the Spongioides. Digis tend to get a little weedy as well, and they can reach out and touch things that you may not want them to. And they're easily broken as well. My fish often break off pieces of this bubblegum digi and leave me with this digi minefield in the bottom of my drop-off tank, fragging with zero effort. Spongioides, it just takes over, it encrusts, and it's very hard to get off the rocks. Not saying to avoid these, just know what you're getting into. Compared to some other Montipora coral that I'm about to talk to you about, the Monte Cap, the Spongioides, and the Digitata, they're just a little weedy for my taste. So, that being said, what other Montipora corals do I prefer in using my reef tanks? Montipora undata. With its metallic green polyps, teal body, and purple rim, the Undata will catch anyone's eye, even if you're not an SPS head. It can also lay out nice plating patterns that while these plates can shade, Undata doesn't grow so fast that it's gonna get out of hand. It's also thicker than Monty caps, so trimming it with bone cutters won't cause the whole colony to crumble to bits. Montipora setosa, a three-in-one coral. It plates, it encrusts, and it branches. And if you're a University of Tennessee or a University of Texas Austin fan, it's orange. It's a very easy to keep coral. You get a lot of variety because of the growth patterns and it's readily available. Encrusting Montipora. These Montes don't plate or branch. They grow directly on the surface of whatever they're placed on and take its shape. One of my favorites, Sunset Monty, the Melonberry Jedi Mind Trick, which is timeless, Aquaman, which I've just discovered and super cool, and Dragon Fruit. Lots of color variety, and since they encrust, you can use them in high flow areas because the flow won't affect their growth pattern like it would with branching corals. 
Yes, they're easy to keep. Just keep this fact in mind. Since they encrust, once they encrust onto the rock that you place them on, you're pretty much stuck with them. Now you can try to super glue over them or epoxy over them or place a more aggressive coral next to the encrusting Monty such the more aggressive coral burns up that Monty. Despite those risks, I still feel like encrusting Montes are worth it. They have a lot of utility for placing them on overflows or back walls of tanks if you like that look, or placing them in high flow areas that LPS coral wouldn't be happy, or if you put SPS coral there, it's gonna grow in the direction of flow and look really strange. That's our comparison of Montipora corals, but what's your take on Montes? Leave us your thoughts in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next comparisons episode.